What I'm going to try to do today is uh, make an attachment for this light. Uh, this is a little camping lantern that I got online and modified last year by adding lithium batteries and circuits. It opens up for a lantern type thing going on, or you can also use it as a flashlight. The button at the bottom down here switches between the flashlight and lantern mode. But what I'm really looking for here is a way to be able to stand this upright. So when the flashlight is on, it actually shines uh, outwards from maybe a table surface or something. So what I'm going to be making today is a small cone piece that attaches to the bottom of the light, uh, maybe with uh, some reflective material attached to it to help give overall a milder light for use on a picnic table or something at, at night. So what I'm going to do is use some of these points along here like this notch and some of these grooves to help lock onto the light. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start out by taking a few measurements here with my calipers. It looks like this part here is uh, just shy of about 82 millimeters. And it looks like this part here is right, right about 82. But I'll uh, get all these measurements done again off camera when I'm not trying to keep everything in frame in my old man shaky hands or doing bad work. Um, Looks like the depth here is going to be about 24 and a half max, but I probably won't need to go that deep. Something closer to 15 will probably be fine. So let's move over to the computer and uh, do some design work. The first thing that you're going to notice here is that all of this is going to be sped up footage. Uh, if you wanted to watch me work in real time, uh, we'd be here all day. So for the sake of brevity, I've, I've accelerated all of the, the drawing here. Um, so we're going to start out with a couple circles and we're going to draw these little notches that I've got uh, on the edge of this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate them around. I am using Google SketchUp. Well, maybe it's not Google SketchUp anymore, but it's SketchUp. This is a 2017 version because they make you pay for it now, and um, I'm cheap, so I don't pay for anything. So one of the things that you might have issues with here is probably all those lines from the copy, rotate, then paste in aren't going to intersect. Um, so we're going to do this a little bit more manually. Uh, one of the other techniques I also use uh, when I'm drawing things like this is I like to make a lot of copies. Uh, so you'll see that I made a copy and then a copy and a copy before I even decided to um, pull that surface up. So now I, I'm going to just do a quick little ring. I, I just want to make sure I've got my sizing correct. So pull it over to the 3D printer and here we go. We'll make a quick 3D print of a ring and we're just going to see if this is even close to the correct dimensions. It, there's always some tolerance in here between, uh, you know, a cheap lantern part plus, you, you know, with a, the 3D printer itself plus, uh, you know, maybe even my calipers themselves. You know, or, you know, maybe I was, uh, I was probably drinking beer when I was uh, measuring these parts too. So let's, uh, let's throw human error in there too. Either way, uh, even before I try to print something that takes like four hours, uh, I'd like to make sure that just sort of the basics are covered here. This is a quick little print. Some of the things I should mention, I am using a 0.4 nozzle. Uh, I did lay everything out in the hopes that the dimensions for a 0.4 nozzle are going to work. So the thickness of the part and whatnot are all going to be compatible with that. I'm not laying something out that's, you know, 0.5 mil so that the slicer program gets a little confused about exactly how fat something is supposed to be. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and see how that turned out. I uh, got my lantern here. Uh, we'll s try to slide that on. I'm, I'm not going to bother to clean this, this whole part up. I know there's some strings and whatnot. I don't care. Uh, I just want to see if it's going to fit. So yeah, that, this is, uh, that's, wow. Uh, that looks really snug, like very snug. Uh, I'm quite surprised. It's actually pretty rare that I get something right uh, first time around. So uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, yeah, real happy actually with the way that, that that fits on there. Man, even the even the little bevels 
uh, for the grooves on there fit really nice. So let's go ahead and start uh, trying to expand upon this and, and actually put the cone part on top of there. Like I said before, I, I do like to make copies of uh, pieces. Sometimes it does help me when I, I go back or need to create a piece that adjoins to it uh, to have another copy going on uh, just as a baseline. Uh, the prior step uh, just sort of helps me out a little bit. So, yep, we're going to start with a new copy. I'm going to extend that up. And I went with about 15 mil on that thickness there. And, and I'm going to create a little ring so that it doesn't slide on too far. Then what I'm going to do is uh, start to build up a surface over here uh, to the side of the cone and with the anticipation that I'm going to use the follow me tool uh, here in SketchUp to basically uh, pull that around the circle. Um, I, I'm going to use, I am going to try to put an arc in there so it's got some curve to it. Um, I, I don't know. Sometimes using the follow me tool is successful and sometimes it, it does stuff like that where it kind of leaves a gap at the top and the bottom, uh, especially if you're using a lot of complex surfaces. So go ahead and group that uh, together and spit that out to the slicer program. And uh, let's start taking a look at some of our settings here, making sure that I'm not trying to make uh, surfaces that are going to be too thick or uh, fill in densities that are uh, too crazy. And let's take a look at how long this is. This part's going to take uh, three hours and 49 minutes. That's, that's a little long, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, we'll see how we turn out. So here we go. So far, so good. Uh, let's keep watching here. Uh, wow. Okay, this is um, this is starting to go very bad. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's not going to work. Uh, let's see. Let me pull this off here in a second. Let me shut this down and uh, let's take a look at what what turned out. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it, it looks like, um, so the base part of it, I'm not going to try to pull the support uh, out there. It's not even worth my time, but uh, the thickness in the areas that printed is okay. But I think what happened here is that I asked for uh, kind of a 0.4 uh, mil thickness, and it's trying to create in an inner and outer layer uh, for that. And that's the same size as the nozzle, so it doesn't think that it can create that. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how thin I really can go here, uh, especially with settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in, uh, and I'm going to create a couple different cones, just the cone part. Um, to see how thin can I really get with a 0.4 nozzle on here. So, uh, and I'm also going to use a little bit of a different approach here. So I'm going to build an outer shell and an inner shell. And the reason I'm doing that is just because I don't trust the way that that follow me tool worked. Sometimes when uh, you're using that tool, it doesn't it doesn't like to always join perfectly, especially if you're using uh, curves and complex things. So what I'm going to do is just uh, drop these two on top of each other and ask uh, SketchUp to intersect all the faces and then group that as a component together. And again, uh, we'll go ahead and pull it into the slicer program uh, and take a look at what we've got here. Uh, this is just the cone again. Ah, 27 hours. Uh, man, nope. Uh, something is not right here. Okay, five hours. But again, some, no, this is just off. Something's not right. Uh, let me uh, try to adjust some of my settings again here. Okay, four hours. Okay, something is definitely not right. I'm printing a solid circle here instead of just a ring for the raft. So I'm going to have to go back into SketchUp and take a look at what's going on. Oh, it's very clear. Those uh, surfaces there are actually interior surfaces and not exterior surfaces. So I got to flip those around and go ahead and uh, recreate the part in here. And then let's take a look at what uh, the slicer program thinks. It is about an hour and 52 minutes, so that seems much more workable. Um, 
I actually went ahead and printed a couple different ones, uh, trying some different thicknesses. I went with like a 0.5 and a 0.6 and as a 0.4 and that didn't work at all. So I'm just going to throw that away. Uh, complete trash. So uh, what I want to do is make sure that these are somewhat resilient. I know I'm trying to make this thin, but you know, I'm going to throw this around on a camping table or whatnot. I don't want it to be super brittle. So I'm going to kind of squeeze the two of these and, and let's see if there's a difference between the 0.5 and 0.6. Because if I can keep it thin so that it passes light better, that's great. Uh, they, they really do feel like about the same thing. So Back in SketchUp here, we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of start a new piece here. It's going to be a compilation of the three pieces I built before, the the bottom housing, kind of that ring, and then the cone itself. Um, I am going to create that ring. Uh, when I do the ring this time, I think I might put a little bit of a bevel onto it, because uh, that way if I put you know about a 45 degree angle bevel on there, I don't actually have to do any support structure. They, the, the printer is able to handle that. Again, I'm going with the technique where I am actually creating an inner and an outer shell and combining the two pieces together. That seemed to work pretty well. I just need to remember to uh, validate that my surfaces are all going to be exterior. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and copy over the cone that I liked with the bottom ring that I liked. And then I'm going to start mating all these surfaces up together. This time around when I draw it, you're going to notice that I'm going to be a lot more careful with things. There's going to be more guidelines in here. And I'm going to spend a lot more time uh, reviewing the model itself just to make sure that all the surfaces intersected correctly and uh, there's no gaps or anything that got flipped around uh, as far as internal versus external. Uh, I know that one of the things that is quite possibly going to be an issue here with this is uh, when I put that bevel in, it left a very small gap uh, between that bottom cup and the stopper ring uh, that, that I kind of did in the center there. So I'm going to start zooming in here, making sure there's no weird internal surfaces, uh, and then start scanning around this little edge right here. See this little lip? It That's, that's what's going to cause you all kinds of weird problems, is it? That surface didn't quite get filled in correctly. So I got to make my way all the way around this thing, uh, probably multiple times around, and, and just make sure that... Everything is intersecting correctly. There's a correct surface in there uh, so that when we create this shape, it's one nice solid object. Uh, for surfaces like that, uh, you know, I really could pull those up a little bit and make it a little more smooth. But uh, for what I'm making here, I really kind of don't care. Uh, they're going to be internal, and this is just a quick little project. So I'm not trying to make everything beautiful and, and perfect. They'll work. I just need it to be able to print. While I was drawing this, it, it, it occurred to me that I was spending a very large amount of time manipulating the camera angle in order to see all these different surfaces. Uh, if you've drawn in 3D, you know uh, often you're spending a lot of time changing camera angles to make sure you can see all your surfaces, remove excess lines like that. Uh, there are better ways to be able to navigate your camera angle. So I actually bought a, uh, a space mouse. If you don't have one and you're drawing in 3D, I highly recommend it. Uh, it makes navigating parts like this uh, or any 3D uh, space for drawing uh, incredibly faster. I, I know that I spent probably the bulk of this project just changing my view. That looks pretty good. Um, doesn't look like I've got any weird surfaces internally. Uh, everything looks pretty well made it up. Let's go ahead and group that up and uh, spit that out to the printer and uh, see what happens. Clearly, I've got a, a little issue with the uh, raft adhesion on the front edge there. I'm going to let this go. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite me in the end. It, it looks like it's okay. This is just PLA filament, so uh, we really shouldn't have too much of an issue. If that was ABS I was using, I'd be a lot more concerned. But uh, at this point in the print, uh, we look pretty good. I'll go ahead and uh, pull that off the printer now, and uh, let's take a look at what we got. Uh, there's our finished part right there. Hey, that looks pretty good. Uh, didn't even have to do support structures for that. Yet, yeah, clearly, I've got a little line there. 
Uh, again, I'm not too worried about that. Um, this is not uh, fine jewelry I'm making here. This is just a quick little project for a lantern for camping. It's going to get dirty and muddy, but it does fit. Uh, actually, it fits really, really well. Earlier, I said I was going to use some uh, reflective material in conjunction with this. What what I'm going to do is I want to set this on there. So I've got these um, emergency blankets. I bought some of these years ago. You can get them for really cheap, but it's it's really, really reflective material. It is a little bit translucent being so thin, but let's go ahead and turn this lantern on and uh, see what kind of light we have. Um, overall, that looks pretty decent. I'm going to turn off uh, some of the surrounding lights I had for lighting things up so you can see that this is just uh, the light uh, with some external reflective material kind of lighting things up here. Now uh, I'm going to apply some glue. This is E6000. This, is, <laughs> this stuff kind of glues everything together. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply that to the rim of this. I'm going to go ahead and take that and stick it down on my mylar and then weight that down. And then I'm going to uh, let that sit for about 24 hours. The glue does take some time to dry. Uh, meanwhile, I couldn't accomplish anything anyway. Uh, my office assistant had taken over my chair. So uh, I'm going to have to go in here and... Uh, kick my office assistant out of the chair um, in, you know, the best way possible. Which, for this cat, means uh, a toy. Oh, wait, cat, office assistant. Uh, his name is Fezzik, and he is a 19-pound Norwegian forest cat. He's a big boy, but he's, uh, he's my buddy. <laughs> All right, there we go. He's gone. Back to work. Let's take a look at the finished product here. Um, looks... Pretty decent overall. The fit is great. Um, let's turn it on. Got some good light going on. So I will uh, turn off some of the exterior lights that I've got lighting things up here so you can really see uh, what this looks like uh, or what it would look like at night. Overall, I'm uh, pretty happy with the way this turned out. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time with my next project.